I'm really excited to share with you a brand new tutorial series in which I will walk you through advanced illustrator techniques creating unique typographic designs. Each episode will focus on building a single letter of the alphabet using a specific style inspired by current digital lettering and illustration trends. In this first episode, we will build the letter P from two intertwining tubes. So here we are in Illustrator and above me you can see the sketches that I usually start with. So I explore the style that I would like to use for the alphabet and I would normally start with the letter A. But then for this particular tutorial I picked the letter P and you can see this sketch here, the second one. I tried to have that second tube wrapped around but I realized that it's not going to look good if it goes the same direction. So then I decided to flip it around and make it more intertwining so it wraps around that vertical tube. But then I also felt like it looks less like a P so to make it more similar to the letter itself I decided that I reverse it. So this is the sketch I'm going to turn into a vector illustration now. So first I will start by drawing a rectangle. So this is going to be the vertical tube, Let's say something like that. And I will move it to the side just so you can see what I'm doing. I will now use the pen tool and come to the top center point click there once and then do the same thing here at the bottom. The smart guides help me to find these placements and then using the direct selection tool and shift up arrow on the keyboard, I just drag it up like that. Now then we can use the corner widget to drag it down and turn it into a nice round shape like that. Let's do the same thing here at the bottom. I select that point with the direct selection tool and then shift down arrow this time, which again pushes it down 10 pixels. And then using the corner widget, I drag it up. Later on, we will add the cap on the top. But for now, this is the shape I needed. And we can change the colors so we don't need a stroke on this. Instead, I'm going to use a gradient. And I will use this default gradient, the yellow to orange colors. But I will change its direction. So I will first press X on the keyboard, which switches to the fill color. And you can see already the gradient showing up here on the panel. And then I will press G to select the gradient tool. And I could either use the angle option here or simply click and drag to define the direction. Now I actually prefer to keep the brighter colors on top. So I will drag from the top down and later on we will be able to refine this. So let's zoom a little bit closer and start drawing maybe from the bottom. So if I click here once, then I can click and drag to define the first curve. And notice that now the same color is used for the fill color, but this time we will need the same thing as a stroke. So for this, I'm going to swap the two colors. So I will press Shift X on the keyboard. So this will use the same gradient, but on the stroke. And we can then continue drawing. So I'm just going to click and drag again here. And we will adjust this later on. Click and drag once more. I try to keep it nice and smooth. Click and drag. Maybe click and drag here. And then one last time, click and drag. Okay. So let's take a look at this. I think it looks quite good, but maybe here at the bottom, if I come back, I can adjust these points a little bit. Maybe just drag that back in. So using the direct selection tool, I'm just adjusting the handles and I feel like the rest of the path is good. Now, what we need to do is to increase the thickness of this. So I will use the shift key and click on the up arrow, maybe twice. I think that's a good size. Now, of course, we can always measure and make sure it's the exact same size as the other tube, but I'm not that bothered at this point. So I feel like it's quite good for the size that we need. We can always adjust things later on. Maybe one thing that I'm going to do is to just drag this point a little bit further somewhere around there. Yeah, I think that looks good now. Now, at this point, it doesn't really feel like a three dimensional tube. It looks very flat because the illusion of three dimensions is something that we are going to add by using masking and by tweaking the gradient on this stroke. 
So let's put these two things together. I'm going to drag this here and it should be somewhere around there. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as the sketch, but that looks promising to me because I already see a bit of contrast between the two tubes. So that's good news. But now what we need to do is to add an opacity mask on this twisted tube. And that is going to help us to separate them even more and to also create the illusion of it coming in front and behind the vertical tube. So having it selected, all I have to do is to have the transparency panel open and then click on make mask. And if you don't see this panel, just go to the window menu and you will find it there in the list. So once you have your mask ready, you just have to turn off the clip option. That will have the mask empty. So by default, when you create an opacity mask in Illustrator, it starts off hiding everything of the currently selected object. But once you turn off the clip option, it becomes an empty mask and it works more like Photoshop by default. So at this point, you will need something to use as the mask. And the best thing that we can do at this point is to copy our vertical tube. So I'm going to select that and press Command or Control C to copy it. Then come back and select the twisted tube, click on the opacity mask. And notice that when we do that, the layers panel will tell us that we are inside the opacity mask and there's actually currently nothing in here. So it's completely empty. If I use Command or Control F, that will paste a copy of that vertical tube inside the opacity masks. So now it's showing up here and we just have to change the color to black. So what this is going to do is that it's completely hiding the twisted tube. So if I come back to the actual object by clicking on the other thumbnail within the transparency panel, then I can show you here, if I turn off that vertical tube, which is a separate object, now we can completely see through these details. So the opacity mask is now working and it's completely hiding those details. Now I'm going to keep the other object visible as well. And I will come back to the opacity mask because now we will need to reveal those details that needs to come in front of the vertical tube. So we hid everything and now we are working backwards and revealing selectively some details. So if I zoom a little bit even closer, I can show you how I do this. I will use the pen tool and I'm going to start here somewhere. So if I just click somewhere there, I will start a new path. Then I can click maybe here and then I can keep coming up. And for now, I'm just going to create a very simple block here. So I like to block things out first. Now it doesn't look great at the moment because we have to adjust its colors. So this became a separate object within the opacity mask. And this should be just using a white fill, but no stroke at all. So if I turn off the stroke and assign white fill, then it's already going to look a little bit better. Now just temporarily to make sure that we can see things better, I am going to go back to the actual objects, select the vertical tube and reverse the gradient. This way we will have more contrast so we can see better what we are doing. So this icon here in the gradient panel is very useful. You can very quickly invert the direction of the gradient. And once again, let's come back to the other objects so the twisted tube and go back into the opacity mask. The reason I have the transparency panel here on the top is because I constantly switch back and forth between the mask and the object view. And I like to keep an eye on it at all times. So let's zoom back here and select this object which we just created. And now all we have to do is to just adjust this shape a little bit. So this is essentially for us to be able to make it look like this tube is coming in front, as I said already. So usually the best thing to do here to create a nice curve is to use the pen tool. Holding down the Alt or Option key, we can bend that line that we originally set up as a straight line. And for now, I'm just going to set it up to something like that and maybe drag this point down a bit. Okay, so it doesn't have to be perfect at this point, but I think that looks quite promising. Maybe this point here can be slightly further out. So if I select these two anchor points with the direct selection tool and I use the left arrow, I think that helps to make it even better and maybe just drag this point back there. 
All right, so there's no visible lines here and the opacity mask is starting to work quite well. Now let's do the same thing here at the bottom. And just to remind you, I'm showing you the sketch. We have to make sure that it looks like the front or the top part is the one that comes in front of the vertical tube. So we will do the same thing as before. I will use the pen tool, start drawing the shape here, come down and then wrap it up like that. Then hold down the old key and add a little bit of curve here at the bottom. All right, I think that looks good. But once again, we will be able to tell better once we add the caps and refine the gradients. So for now, I'm happy with the way it looks. Maybe this line can be a little bit further down. I feel like it might benefit from that. Okay, something like that. If we zoom out, it should already start to look closer to a three-dimensional form. But now let's switch back again to the normal view or the object view. And I'm going to select this gradient, flip it back to the way it was, and then let's add the caps. Now for this, all I'm going to use is simply the ellipse tool. Pressing L on the keyboard will get you that quickly. And then I am going to draw it here on the top, making sure that it is perfectly aligned to the width of this tube. Then I will zoom closer and we will just simply move it up and then drag it out a bit. Yeah, I think that looks good. Now we just have to set this up as a color, as an individual color. I'm going to use probably yellow, but maybe make it even brighter than that. By shift clicking on here, I can add a little bit even more brightness, so something like that. Let's zoom out. Yeah, I think that looks okay. And now we can just duplicate this cap, Alt, click and drag, and then I'm going to rotate it around and zoom a bit closer. Yeah, I will make it smaller to make sure it's nicely aligned here. That's not bad. And then let's do the other one, Alt, click and drag. This time, again, we rotate it around and I will align it. And just to make sure the cap is completely visible, I'm going to drag it a bit further out here and maybe just adjust the path that we created. So I come back there, drag it out, and I can actually see that this path is supposed to be wider. So we need to make this cap larger. Yeah, let's just select the cap, drag it back out here, stretch it out. And I think that looks quite good now. So making sure that it's nicely aligned. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to zoom back out a bit. And now pretty much all we have to do is to adjust the gradients and then adjust the masks. Before we continue, I just wanted to let you know about our creative membership program. For a small monthly fee, you get access to over 200 hours of Adobe Certified Online Training courses. Master all the tools and skills needed to become a professional graphic designer or illustrator. As a pro member, you will get mentoring from me and my team, access to webinars, student forum, and creative briefs to help you build an outstanding portfolio. Pro members can also download the project files for all of our YouTube tutorials. Sign up at yesimadesigner.com slash memberships and start your free trial today. And now let's head back to the tutorial. So the biggest problem is that we don't have enough contrast between the two tubes. So what I'm going to do to fix that is to select this path and make sure I have the stroke attribute selected by pressing X on the keyboard. Then immediately the gradient panel shows up. And by the way, the option I'm using here is the apply gradient within stroke. You can always change this and have it along the stroke. And to be honest, I feel like that actually works better for us. So it will be easier to generate the contrast that we need. Now we can still flip the gradient around, so reverse it. And that will look a bit more natural once again. We want the brighter colors on top. That's just the way we think that light is normally comes from above. So that just also feels more natural when we set up the colors. But now that we've done this, we have to definitely fix a couple of things. First of all, this cap is too small, so we just have to extend its size. I think, yep, yeah, that looks better. And now we go back to our mask and select first this shape that we created. And obviously now I can see it much better, so I can fix it much easier as well. Drag these up and create that twist there. Maybe it can be even higher, something like that. 
Yeah, that looks better. And if I come down here at the bottom, once again, this other shape should be fixed as well. And here we will need to refine this. I can actually see that we need the curve to go the other way. So I set it up originally the wrong way, but that's no problem. I just use the pen tool, holding down the alter option key, I drag it the other way. And we can now use the direct selection tool and maybe just set it up here a little bit further out. This one we drag up and then we have that nice S curve that was needed here at the bottom. And I feel like that is looking much better now. Now let's switch back again to the object itself. And I'm going to just adjust a little bit the colors here. So adjusting it will help us to see it slightly differently here at the bottom. Okay, now because there is a very strong twist or turn here, it is overlapping the shades of the gradient. So I can maybe try to drag this slightly further down to help it separate a bit better. Or we can also adjust this curve here or the handle until that artifact is gone. I feel like something like that looks a little bit better. However, I quite like the way that this transition is visible here. So I will actually leave it like this for now. And let's zoom out a bit. Let's take a look at the detail on the top. Once again here, there is a bit of transitional glitch there. We can try to fix that by dragging this out, maybe a bit further, something like that. And then also just coming back to this gradient, if I select the fill, once again, we can try to move this gradient color stop a bit higher. That way we have a bit more contrast there. Maybe even this one can come a little bit higher, something like that. And then on this stroke as well, if we come back here, we can stretch this out, making sure we have better contrast between the two tubes. Okay, maybe even that one. Yeah, that looks much better. So if I zoom out, now it's starting to take shape, but this cap here, because it's facing downwards, should be darker. So once again, think about the light coming from the top. If this is further down, it should be probably more red. So if we come back here, maybe let's select red and then shift click on here, and maybe have it brighter a bit than red, or it could be even darker. So if I'm thinking about the light, I think that looks a little bit more realistic. We should do the same thing here as well. So shift click up there. And for this one, maybe I will just pick more like an orange color, something like that. Let's take a look. Yes, I quite like that. And then maybe this top detail here just needs to be even a bit more brighter just to separate from the tube itself. And that is pretty much it. Of course, it can be further refined, make it look more glossy by adding some reflections and highlights and shadows. But I'm going to reserve these techniques for another tutorial. So if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do so because we have lots of creative content coming up on the channel. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.